at South by Southwest, right? Yeah. 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 That was fun for me. I had this movie and Boyhood there. That's crazy. And so they're, they're basically two time travel films. <laughs> you know? Well, I really love this movie. It's actually, I think it's my favorite of the Spirit Brothers movies. And okay. it's so different than Daybreakers. I'm interested, yeah. what was the experience of working with this film, with them on this film versus, versus Daybreakers? Um, their learning curve. Mm -hmm. You know, Daybreak, they had made The Undead, which was a really cool movie. Yeah. And so in a lot of ways to call Daybreakers their first film isn't fair, but in a lot of ways it was because they'd never dealt with like a really big crew and they never dealt with a studio and there was mm -hmm. a lot more money at play. <laughs> and with money is responsibility and it becomes the, you know, when you're making a movie with your brother for five cents, you know, it, it's there's a simplicity to the leadership skills involved in making a movie, you know? In on Predestination, I feel like they've arrived as fully formed mm -hmm. town. I mean, I was so happy that they offered me this movie because on Daybreakers, I was like, well, I love Daybreakers and I think it's a <laughs> badass movie and um, uh, I'm really proud of it. But I knew that they have better movies in them. Yeah. I was like, you know, these guys are gonna make great films. They, they talk and think about movies in the right way uh, and I was really worried that, you know, they would go on and, you know, I would be in their early work or something <laughs> and not be. And then when I, when this script came, I was like, wow, it's such a departure for yeah. them because it's playing around with genre. But the truth is, this is a sophisticated movie. I mean, I'd be, I'd be proud to show this movie to Martin Scorsese, you know, I, I don't. There isn't anybody I wouldn't want to see this movie. I feel so much of it feels almost like a one act play. I mean, that scene between you and Sarah in that bar—that's just a—that's just you guys talking, basically. I know. What is that Which, preparation process for that? Well, it's really hard. Luckily, for me, I have some experience. You know, the Before trilogy has a lot of yeah. um, elements where you just you're uh, hanging a lot of the movie on just listening and talking, yeah. which is hard to do. Um, but the key is you just have to be committed to it and um, and not be afraid of it. Mm -hmm. And it, I think that might be hard for some people, um, but the spirit's just totally committed. And also, let's face it, Sarah Snook is giving a world-class performance. It's amazing, yeah. And to see it from an, an actor you don't know, <laughs> you know, I mean, it'd be one thing if it was Kate Blanchett or somebody like, but you know, for the device of the movie to work, we knew it had to be a relatively unknown person mm -hmm. To audiences, yeah. for for the for the twist of the movie to work, yeah. it, it, it you didn't want to be watching the acting; you wanted to be watching the movie, and so we knew we were hanging the whole engine of the movie on unknown actors, and Sarah just killed it. I mean, I love her performance. I mean, how much of how much of your performance is influenced by the way Sarah approaches uh, the character? I don't know. It was so symbiotic, and it happened so mm -hmm. naturally. We we had two weeks of rehearsal before we started this, where we were supposed to be working on those kind of things, and a lot of that time got usurped by trying to understand the timeline of the movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, whenever you do a time travel <laughs> movie, I mean, we had to take out giant graphs and be like, okay. Also, just to make sure we understood exactly where we were, because we knew we had to shoot it out of sequence, obviously. So it was challenging, but I, my hat's off to her. I mean, I, I loved watching her work. I loved the way that she approached this character. Uh, I just kind of spent most of the movie in all of her. <laughs> I mean, what's interesting to me about the movie is that usually when people talk about destiny, it's usually a positive thing. But in this film, it's really sort of capricious and almost nihilistic. It's not very good at all. And what do you stand on sort of free will versus, I guess, determinism or, or destiny? Well, I'm always fascinated by that dialogue because there seems to be some duality to the truth of the answer, mm -hmm. which is that why that? I mean, like, let's say all of us hit these crisis moments in our life where we honestly don't know, whatever it is, whether to go left or right, yeah. you know? And something happens, things play out a certain way, and we go left or we go right. And then in hindsight, 20 years later, it always seems like you were always going to go right. <laughs> it was an illusion that it was even a decision. Mm -hmm. You were never going to go left, you, you know? And yet, I mean, I remember, for me, one of them, is whether or not to drop out of college and try to become an actor or or join the Merchant Marines. I had okay. a friend who joined the Merchant Marines and I really wanted to be like Jack London and uh, and I wanted adventure and things like that. I was 18 years old and, and now it seems so obvious that I was gonna be an actor and obviously <laughs> that was gonna happen. But in that moment, it didn't feel obvious. 
And was it obvious or, you know, I mean, I, I love that. And the, the point being is I, I don't know, have an answer to your question. <laughs> that was a good answer. 